careful that puck didn't go in. Rick Dudley, the coach of the San Diego Gulls, has his team rolling along. They swarm. In fact, in their last six games, they've outscored the opposition now 23 to 5 with the 3 0 lead here. So this team dominating in this league as the Eagles clear it all the way down into the San Diego zone. In the history of hockey in San Diego, they've had, however, only one championship. That back in 1950, the Skyhawks of the old Pacific Coast Hockey League. Maybe you remember them, don't you? Definitely so. Here's the play along the, we born yet? Here's the <laughs> play along the far side, and it is the play at the right wing point. Perry Anderson, or Holder, I should say, shoots one, and a blocker shaped Tremple off. Stolk now trying to dig it free. Uh, Harris and the boards picks an opening and clears it outside the line. Well, you know, this defenseman holder that with, uh, with all the experience, they move the puck so well between each other that they just force the forwards to make in that critical error. And so they clear it down. So now to kill it off, up front, Struch and Chernemaz, Stolk and Guy on defense. And the two oldest Eagles, Chernemaz at 29, Guy at 27, out there now for Salt Lake. Here's the play now to the slot. Trepilov scoops it up a la uh, who, Mark Grace uh, with a good play into the Salt Lake goal crease there. More like the Wizard of Oz, that looked like Ozzie Smith? Oh, there, for sure. Ozzie Smith going to Houston, did you hear that? Yeah, it, it hurts me being a longtime Cardinal fan, and Rick Dudley's not too concerned about it. His team leading three to nothing. He has a lot to prove. Bob Francis uh, not too pleased about it. Rick Dudley let go by the Buffalo Sabres. Bob Francis, he's trying to figure out what it's going to take to just get a goal tonight. Well, the Golden Eagles are going to need a break in a big way. Lamaru to draw for San Diego. Eagles still have 35 seconds to kill on the power play. Eagles uh, center Iceman have been very effective so far this season. In one game about two weeks ago, they got 23 out of 26 face-off wins in one period. That's unbelievable. Here are the goals winning this one, however. McSween, right wing point now to Deneen. McSween shoots through traffic and deflected wide. Arneal now. Along the far hash mark to the point. Now to the left wing side for McSween. Chernemaz stays with him. It's flipped behind the goal. Treploff falls down, wound to the right point. Deneen shoots. That's off a uh, stick and wide. San Diego now with 10 seconds to go on the penalty. They're swarming into the Salt Lake zone. They try and dump it in front, and pinching in is McSween. At two seconds left for the cruise penalty, he's back on. The goal's just one for four in the power play. The penalty killing pretty effective tonight, and the Eagles just able to dump it outside the line of the goals. Play it in deep as they change up defensively. Great job by Rich Chernemaz on the point. He created confusion for the San Diego goal defenseman. Here the Eagles clearing it in. Lambert winds it free and up into the far side with uh, 5.24 to go in the second. 3 nothing goals. I'll tell you, you, you mentioned in San Diego, when they really get hopping, it's a swarming offense. To me, it looks like a total Chinese fire drill. I mean, they get the players out there going in every which way direction, and they just create the opportunities for themselves. Be sure to tune in for more live coverage of IHL Hockey on Wednesday, December 2nd. The Golden Eagles take on the Phoenix Roadrunners right here on KXV Channel 14, along with the Golden Eagles Radio Network, All Sports Radio 106.5, the score in Salt Lake, and KLO in Ogden, Utah. Here's the play on left wing, and Lindy Ruff able to poke it to center. Wortman able to chop it right back in, and the goaltender himself, Malarchuk, sets it up for his own defense. It's wound free outside the blue line, and Wortman has to retreat back. 13 to 10. Shots on goal in favor of San Diego. Not a lot of shots for either squad. Here's the bouncing puck at center. St. Pierre lets it go for Wortman in across the line. Here is the Saugus, Massachusetts native, one of two American-born Golden Eagles, the other being Todd Harkins. It is the uh, player St. Pierre unable to control, and Udine able to poke it to the San Diego blue line. One of the goals, when they get a lead, they check, check, check. Here's the Udine now, pokes it away for Salt Lake, trying to play it for McCarthy. McCarthy centers in front for Forsen, a Udine is shot. He was in deep in uh, Mylarchuk, Makes a pad save, and the goals wind it to center. Here's Guy on right wing. Spanks it right back into San Diego territory. Harris into four check. It's loose to the side of the goal. Out of the left wing point, but outside the line. And Guy has to go back for Salt Lake and just clears it right back in. And the goals just smash it all the way deep into the Salt Lake zone. This should be an icing. Back after it is Guy icing is the call. San Diego leading three to nothing. This is Salt Lake Golden Eagles hockey. Oh, 
Oh, Brian, we need a goal. We need a break. A break in a big way. Something going off a player, a deflection off one of their These own players or laughing. something. Sergei Starikov, Dale DeGray, Lindy Ruff, Gore Deneen, Larry Floyd at the San Diego Players bench. Rick Dudley clapping and trying to get his team fired up. They don't need much because they're already up three to nothing over a Salt Lake team, stunned by the losses of LeBeau and Hafey. Here's Forslund, a shot. That ricochets off the backboards and wide, and San Diego break three men to center. Anderson in across the line. Works in front of center one. Prefloff bumps McDonough out of the play, and Udine gently clears, but not out. Holder shoots one, caught by Prefloff. He holds on. Dave, the fans may wonder, well, why do the Flames call up LeBeau and Hafey? This team needing those two players. The Flames with some defensive injuries as the goals worked it free at the left wing point. Shot by Holder. Good shot by Holder. Uh, look, uh, Trefiloff looked a little surprised in the net. He looked like he wasn't really concentrating on the shot from the point, but he made the glove hand save. Flames were on a big road trip. They play in Tampa Bay. They felt they needed some more offensive punch. They also lost their defenseman, Al McKinnis, earlier this week. And so that is why LeBeau and Hafey are currently up in Calgary. And as a result, the Eagles need somebody else to pick up the slack. Here's Melrose, right side for Strooch, moving in against the San Diego defense, trying to center one. Holder is tied up. Now Gillingham holding on, does dump it in the slot, but Anderson breaks back. Left wing for the uh, player across the line, McDonough in front for Shank. In on goal, Shank flips it right back behind the net, and McDonough centers for Holder, fires! That's blocked away by Chernamaz, who is able to work out of there, forced Salt Lake and the Eagles. No rolls, right side for Stroop. Down to the last three minutes of this period. Goals three, Eagles nothing. Chernamaz down the right side. In on goal, fires one. Shoulder save, Malarchuk, he holds on. Just to comment on, on uh, you're talking about the players. Here we go, Chernamaz pushing with a goals player. Gillingham involved. Right back behind the goal. The Eagles, I'm sure, frustrated at this point. Gillingham wants to start something now against the San Diego player and starting to try and get that arm free on the San Diego player back of the net. Well, Todd Gillingham and Rich Chernum as the captain. Rich Chernum as trying to get something going, obviously. Get in there and try to create some activity. Eagles, uh, Gillingham frustrated as they take one goal player to the penalty box. Holder and Chernamaz have some words. Steve Metcalf, 14 years as a, an official in this league, and it all started as Chernamaz broke down the right side. As you see the good shot, here's uh, Gillingham in front of the net getting tied up with McSween, the defenseman for San Diego. And uh, McSween got taken right off the ice automatically instantly. And now uh, one of the other players for San Diego is getting taken off. Chernamaz and, and, uh, and Gillingham trying to get something going. Gillingham uh, skating to the penalty box along the near side. We have some scores in the International League of Final for Wayne Comets over the Kansas City Blades, five to four, another independent team, the Allen County Coliseum in Fort Wayne, Indiana. That's the final in the IHL. Here we'll have penalties day with 2.51 to go in the period. Bob Francis waiting to see what all of this is going to develop here at the Delta Center. Well, I'll tell you, you know, just to add a little bit to what you were saying about uh, two players, LeBeau and uh, Hafey, getting called up by Calgary. Back in the late 60s and early 70s, when I was actively playing, the, there used to be three different minor league levels. You used to have, like, your A, your AA, your AAA, and then the NHL. And what they do is they'd fill in for players. We don't have that any longer. We don't have no leagues below, below this IHL where really we can fill with any players. Game scheduled for Saturday, November 21st between the Eagles and Kansas City has been moved to Monday, November 23rd. And the pocket schedules that have been sent out throughout this city, there says uh, it says that there's a game on the 21st. And again, that has been changed to the 23rd to, to accommodate a concert here at the Delta Center. Dave, you're talking about the call-ups and how that affects some of the other players as well. That's the advantage the goals have in that. They're not going to have anybody leave this team. They're an independent squad. And that's going to be an advantage for them as Gillingham escorted to the penalty box. Rick Dudley looks on for San Diego. Well, uh, unfortunate injuries would be spell the only doom for San Diego at this point. And they would pick up some players that are out there that are not with some other teams or some disgruntled players. Well, LeBeau and Hafey called up and 
They are the leading scorers. LeBeau, sixth in the IHL, the leading point scorer for Salt Lake. Hafey for the Salt Lake Golden Eagles, their leading scorer last year. Both players in Calgary, Hafey with 10 points and LeBeau 19. You take those two players out, 30% of the offense taken out just with those two players. Well, both those players, like you mentioned, uh, you know, that's total offense, pure offense for the Golden Eagles. And that's hard for the team to rebound, you know, five hours later when you find out your two offensive stars are gone. They're announcing the penalties here, Dave, here as Bob Francis looks on. Well, as you're getting your penalties here, it looks like the goal's number 14, Don McSween, who initially caused the whole fracas to start in front of the net as he tied up uh, Todd Gillingham for the Golden Eagles. Well, the Gulls are going to get an extra penalty. It's Chem Dry Lucky Puck Night, November 20th, as the Eagles take on Kansas City. That will be next Friday night. First 3,000 fans receive free souvenir hockey pucks. Rich Chernomaz in the box for the cross check for Salt Lake, but the Gulls pick up. Nope, actually, it's going to be an even strength situation. McSween and Chernomaz matching minors. Holder and Gillingham, five each for fighting. Rich Chernomaz last year broke the record set by Doug Palazzari. Most goals in an Eagles uniform, regular season and playoffs. He looks to set Lyle Bradley's mark for games played and all-time scoring. Well, Rich Chernam is doing an excellent job so far this season. He's the cornerstone of this Salt Lake Golden Eagle team. Well, again, matching penalties all the way around. Two fighting majors and coincidental minors, so the teams will skate four on four. Only 2.51 to go in this period. Golden Eagles down by three, and they're going to need something quick. It gives them uh, some momentum going into the third period. I was watching uh, Kerry Clark in warm-ups and he was scoring on some real nifty shots. Maybe he's uh, he's out there right now. Maybe he can get something going. They're going to need something gross. First Salt Lake scored his first IHL goal last week. Clark and Cruz up front. And the goals counter with Floyd and Nichols as the puck is uh, cleared into the neutral zone. Well, they take off the penalties, although they were coincidental, so the teams will skate five on five. Here's the play, now back of the goal. Stolt bounces it on the left wing side for Cruz. Clark able to work out of there, and here he comes in a two-on-one break. Clark with Gross, the pass for Gross, all alone in a goal! Stop, shoots! Oh, Archuk to save. He waited before he shot, I think, too long before he pulled the trigger. Definitely, uh, Gross getting that puck from Kerry Clark, and uh, as he skates in, he waits, definitely to, takes himself out of a good scoring opportunity. He takes himself away from the angle, the good scoring angle. Gross worked all alone. He's a right-handed shot. Malarchuk came out to cut down the angle, but I don't think it was as much the angle, Dave, as you say. He should have shot it a little bit higher and sooner. Oh, definitely. Clint Malarchuk goes down, spread eagle. He's got to take that puck and throw it right over top of his shoulder and into the net. Malarchuk, a fourth-round Quebec pick neck in 1981, played junior hockey with the Portland Winterhawks, a very famed junior hockey franchise. 2.23 to go in the period. Eagles trying desperately to score and give them some momentum going into this next period. Here's the play back of the goal's cage, but Lamoureux able to break out of there. Mitch Lamoureux played in the American Hockey League, played in Europe the last several seasons, dumps it right back behind the goal. Here is Guy for Salt Lake, holding, playing it for Cruz on the left wing side. Nichols trying to muscle it free. Gross on the far side, pokes it to the point, but not out. Deneen fires one, and a stick save Trefiloff. Here's Nichols, back to the right wing point for Deneen. He lets it fly, going wide of the target. Under two minutes to go in the period. San Diego whip it behind the net. Floyd being watched by Brost. It's tipped to the blue line, held in at the point. Hide it in. Left wing side for Ruff. His shot blocked away. Brost breaks out of there with Cruz in his left. Cruz down the left wing shot. Cuts to the middle of the blue line. Then gives a glove sandwich to a San Diego player, Deneen. He doesn't want Cruz. Up, I'm afraid Cruz is going to get tossed from this one, but not before he continues to flail away on Deneen, who's not really much of a fighter. Cruz has his helmet knocked off, and the linesman in a separate. Wilkins had his arm up first, and I'm very afraid that he's going to get that instigation and get tossed from this game. He's definitely tossing. Paul Cruz showing a little uh, frustration as he comes in. What all started is the Eagles broke down the left wing side, Dave, and Cruz, instead of taking the shot, gave Deneen a glove sandwich. Well, Cruz was trying to put the puck between Deneen's legs and try to get around and pick it up, but frustrated, he just dropped the stick and said, let's go. Paul Cruz, uh, six foot, 200 pounds from Merritt, British Columbia. He is 22 years of age, had 29 points and 267 minutes in penalties. Bob Francis, trainer Brian Patapi, 
Eagle players look on, all frustrated, and they may be even more frustrated if Cruz picks up a game as kind of new rule in pro hockey. We touched on it during the last intermission. If you instigate a fight, Dave, automatic, you are tossed from the hockey game. You know, I like that rule because I don't like, I think you need to take the goodness out of the game. The players don't need to, it used to be back in the 70s where every team kept one player that was a goon on there, and all they did was instigate, go out on the ice, try to create problems, and then all of a sudden get into a fight. They're trying to clean that up a little bit. I, I like that rule, I really do. Yeah, if he picks up the game as conduct, no question about it, Gordon Ean, a Boy, seven minutes uh, penalty. I don't know if I, I think it was a roughing penalty and a fighting major for him. Good break for Salt Lake. Equal out on the minor penalties. The only difference here is that Cruz has been tossed from the game. Goals players don't like it. They feel, how can you have coincidental penalties if Cruz started the fight? San Diego feeling they should have a power play, and I think they're right. Well, you're correct, uh, Michael, because uh, what happened was Cruz was frustrated. He didn't make the offensive play that he wanted. He cross-checked uh, Deneen right in the face, with his, right in front of the referee, Mark Wilkins, and uh, then uh, the gloves drop, and Wilkins calls uh, uh, coincidental penalties against both players. Well, we'll see what takes place here. Wilkins came back. Bob Francis is saying, wait a minute. You're going to change it right now, but let's see. Gord Deneen, is they're making the announcement, it is a roughing minor, and five for fighting. That's what they had called originally. I don't know why Wilkins went back over. That was the original call. Kevin Guy saying, what are you doing now? That was the first call you made. Well, I'm Bobby Francis yelling, let's drop that clock before you change <laughs> your mind again. Right. Face-off will be just to the top of the circle. Break for the Eagles in that regard. Rick Dudley can't believe it at the San Diego bench. Break for Salt Lake in one way, but not really in regards to the fact that the Paul Cruz is missing now from action for the rest of this game. Attendance tonight here, 65-78. Great attendance here tonight on a Friday. More action next uh, Friday night. Eagles against the Kansas City Blades. Great crowd tonight, a tribute to the Golden Eagles. And Here's Gaia shot from the point. Malarchuk, a glove save and no rebound as Harkins pushing with the gray in front of the goal. And uh, Dave, I know players sometimes if you're down in a in a game, Paul Cruz may feel it's worth the trade-off for the game as conduct to get the fans into the game and maybe get the players going a little bit. There's no question that happens a lot of times that you swing the momentum with some fist to cuss. I've seen it happen in the past, and I think that was evident on that particular play. John Anderson on the bench for San Diego, the mustache for him, 35 years of age. First round pick of the Toronto Maple Leafs way back in 1977. Played with Toronto, Quebec, and Hartford. Played back in the Central League, as you mentioned, back in 77, 78 with the rivals of the Golden Eagles, the old Dallas Blackhawks. Boy, in the last uh, 10 years, he really hasn't changed his style of play at all. Here's the play back of the goal. We're late in this period. San Diego holding to a three goal lead. Eagles Eugene into the neutral zone. Close it to the top of the circle, and McDonough able to leave it for Dale DeGray. Right side pass to center. Anderson unable to control, and Salt Lake's Harris able to whip it right back in. Under a minute to go in the period. Eagles trying to hold it in, but it's knocked in offside at the defense. 57 seconds to, to go. Bob Francis not happy. You know, Bob Francis was an assistant for the Salt Lake Golden Eagles under Paul Baxter when the Eagles won a Turner Cup in 87-88. And it was against Rick Dudley, who was the coach of then the Flint Spirits in the league. And Rick Dudley remembers that. He was talking about coming back to Salt Lake and the frustrations of losing in the Turner Cup. He comes back this year, and his team, best in the league and leading here at three to nothing. He's got a good team in front of him, I'll tell you that. Here is Ruff on the right side for DeGray and he pops it right back in. He had players that year in Flint. McDonough was one of them, but he also had John Cullen, who has gone on to bigger and better things than the NHL, as the goals play it late in this period, 40 seconds to go, and another Russian for Solik, Alex Shudin, trying to play it. Harris, he's too well checked at the point. Ruff steals, shoots it, and a stick save treble off in the fourth check, McDonough. Back of the goal, John Anderson, centers. Harkins parades the slot and leads it on the backhand deep into San Diego territory with 20 seconds to go in the period. Here is the play for DeGray on left wing. Ahead for a rough, left wing Anderson. John Anderson pokes it in, 12 seconds to go in the period. Little David St. Pierre back at, but Eagles are gonna be glad this period's over. Here's St. Pierre into center, crosses the checker line, backs it in. That's gonna do it, two seconds left, one, and that's it. 
A 3 nothing goals lead through 40 minutes of play. I'll tell you, the Golden Eagles are getting some golden scoring opportunities, but not really taking advantage of them. That's the story. Clint Malarchuk, that being tested a lot tonight, looks for the shutout. 3 nothing goals after two. We'll come back with more in just a moment. Yes. Yes. I know. Brutal. Brutal. Yep. <laughs> He's great. Okay. That's tough tap dancing when you get those breaks like that. We got Don, tell him uh, Don Waddell. Uh, no, we got Don, Don Waddell will be up here. He's the vice president and general manager of the goals, W-A-D-D-E-L-L. W-A-D-D-E-L-L. Vice president and general manager. So we're gonna do a little talk and then you're gonna Tell him W A D D. W A D D. W A D D E L L. Two D's, two L's. Mike Barrack here at the Delta Center. Three nothing. San Diego at the end of 40 minutes of play. Only 14 shots on goal for the Golden Eagles here tonight. Again, I'm Mike Barrack alongside former Golden Eagle Dave Ferrakisi. Dave, not too much pressure on Clint Malarchuk here tonight. I'll tell you, just a stellar job of the defense by San Diego. Did not really enable the Golden Eagles with any good scoring opportunities. And when the Golden Eagles have, they haven't capitalized. We'll take a look at the shots on goal through two periods of play. Seven, six in the first. In the second, 10 shots to eight in favor of San Diego. Only 14 shots. The goals have been limited to 17, but you're not going to win any hockey games if you only pepper a goaltender with 14 through two. Well, that's very true, you know, and uh, especially Malarchuk with all the experience in there, you got to get those high quality shots to beat them. No question about it. Right now, the Eagles have not been putting the pressure on the San Diego goaltender. And again, penalties have hurt four power plays tonight for the goals. Well, frustration is definitely starting to set in now on the Golden Eagles, and we need something big to happen for the Golden Eagles to turn this around. Could the Eagles come back? This is a team that has outscored their opponents 23-5 to five over the last six games. I definitely believe they can. It's just that you need a break. You need something to happen. The Eagles can capitalize, and then you, you know what? They start getting worried, and the Eagles uh, start to pressure. We could have it happen. They're without LeBeau, without Hafey, now Paul Cruz picks up the game as Condor. Well, you got Captain Rich Chernamaz out there, and he can pick it up at any time during the contest. I look to see the Golden Eagles turn it on here in this third period. Golden Eagles, as uh, mentioned, not uh, putting a lot of shots on the goals uh, through two. Patrick LeBeau called up. He was tremendous uh, at the start of the season, acquired by the uh, flames for the Montreal organization. Sean Hafey, uh, the third in scoring this year, had uh, 41 goals for the Golden Eagles last year. Again, we want to reiterate the reason those two were called up to the parent Calgary Flames because they're struggling a little bit. They're on a long road trip. They're really down in numbers as far as the forwards are concerned. They have four defensemen out, so they needed to sub change some things up in Calgary. Unfortunately for the Golden Eagles, a big weekend series against the Gulls, and you know, you're against the 
powerhouse team in the league without you two snipers. Well, there's no question about it that Bobby Francis is having trouble getting any real offense out of the Golden Eagles tonight. But it only takes time, and some of these younger players got to pick it up. But we'll see how those younger players do. Guys like Todd Bros, David Struch, uh, Sandy McCarthy. These guys got to get moving. David St. Pierre hasn't played a lot here tonight. Well, I think you got to see that aggressive style of play enter this third period. They've got to get that puck into the zone. They've got to jump on those older defensemen from San Diego and create some good scoring opportunities. Paul Cruz was tossed in this game at the tail end of the second period. He was down the left wing side, and instead of taking the shot, he decided to say hello to Mr. Deneen. <laughs> he definitely took the shot as he tried to pull that uh, puck between the legs, and then he cross-checked uh, the defenseman Deneen for San Diego. And not only that, started throwing rights and left. Paul Cruz, 22 years of age from Merritt, British Columbia, led Salt Lake in penalties last year. So, Dave, 3 0 after two. We'll see what happens. They have a lot of activities on the ice. The veterans uh, night uh, here this evening honoring the veterans, but the Eagles need something in that third period to get them moving. Well, they definitely do, and I think you're going to have to see a solid offensive style of play to come on from the Golden Eagles, and then you can see some golden scoring opportunities. Well, that's the story here. The goals leading 3 to nothing over Salt Lake. We'll come back with more, including a news update here. This is Salt Lake Golden Eagles hockey.
kind of a crowd do you look for tomorrow night? 10,000. Really? Any special promotion going on at all? Or? Yeah, winning hockey games. That's it. Are you getting more play in the well, media because well, of it? Great. Ever. Who's giving you the best? Uh, uh, all the TV stations are doing it. But the newspaper front page. The Union? How about the LA Times? Yeah, good. Yeah, they're going out of business, you know. December 16th, the San Diego edition. Yeah, San Diego. So what do you heard so of? Just one paper. Two hours, he said. <laughs> <laughs> but we're struggling tonight with this. See what can you do? Yeah, 11:44. Stop the clock. God. 24 minutes. 24 minutes. What? They're gonna sue sue us for this. The league. The league. International Hockey League action from the Delta Center in Salt Lake City. It's the Red Hot San Diego Gulls 3 and the Salt Lake Golden Eagles nothing. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Mike Barak, the voice of the Salt Lake Golden Eagles, and we're joined by the architect of the winningest team in the IHL, Vice President, General Manager Don Waddell of the San Diego Gulls. And Don, congratulations. What a team you guys have uh, put together. Thanks a lot, Mike. You know, we've been very fortunate to be in the situation that we're in as an independent team and being our third year in the, in the league. So being 13-0-1 coming into tonight's game, we're very pleased with. Don, the uh, Salt Lake Golden Eagles are an affiliated team with Calgary. Can you touch on the differences with the San Diego Gulls? what the situation means for you as an independent hockey team? As an independent team, you're, we're mostly going to be an older team. Uh, the, the young talent, the high draft picks are going to be in their farm team, a, a Calgary's farm team, developing to play in the NHL. We don't have to develop any players for the NHL, so we got to go out and get the best talent available to us. Normally that is with some older players, and that's what we've assembled here. You know, We're a little older team. I think our average age is 28, 29. Well, you could be playing for this team. Yeah, I'm younger than some of the guys, uh, believe it or not. So. Uh, we're very fortunate to be able to put together the kind of quality and, and character was the key. When we were building this team, Rick Dudley and myself, we really looked at the character of the guys. Skill is very important, but we wanted guys that had a good character because with, with the age being up there, it is, we didn't want guys that are just there collecting a paycheck. We wanted guys that come out every day to work, practice or game and work and give their effort. And that's what we have here. We have a great group of guys. and. It's shown so far in the standings. Must be very exciting for you. You touched on it off the air that you're getting great media coverage in San Diego. Hockey in Southern California previously taken off in Los Angeles, but now down the coast in San Diego, fans are excited about your hockey team. Yeah, they are. You know, they started to get excited last year, the second half of the season, when we were really winning, and you know, we ended up on a pretty good note, and then we lost quickly in the playoffs. So this year, being undefeated at home and you know the one overtime loss, the fans in San Diego have really gathered and uh, you know and really jumped on the bandwagon as we call it but the media in San Diego has been tremendous with this all the uh, electronic media both radio and TV have been giving us a total 100% of their support and along with the newspaper so anytime you get that kind of cooperation it's going to help and show at the box office. We're with Don Waddell vice president general manager of the San Diego Gulls and Don out west hockey Salt Lake City great crowd nearly 7,000 here tonight Phoenix the Roadrunners have struggled on the ice but off the ice very well and now the Gulls talk of expansion what about hockey out west oh I think you know the Gretzky thing in LA five or six years ago is the best thing that happened for hockey in the west you know before that uh, you know it struggled at times on the west coast I know Salt Lake's had a franchise since 69 I believe and they've done very well here but with Gretzky coming to the west coast it's really put uh, the west coast on the map and it's been a big addition for us uh, you know no not only do people now know what the game of hockey is they want to come out and see it and our situation with LA being so close they've been sold out the last four or five years you know, it's been a rollover effect where they said, let's go see a hockey game. We can't go to L.A. Let's go watch the Gulls play in San Diego. And throughout the International League, you have Cincinnati now averaging nearly 10,000 a game, Milwaukee with the great crowds, and the improved play. What do you think about what's happening right now in the International League? Well, I think you've got to contribute, to, first of all, to the, uh, the ownership of the league. We have great ownership. You can't have great cities and great... Uh, teams if you don't have good ownership to start with and that's the one thing this league has is very good ownership 
Uh, the cities are tremendous in this league. You know, 12 cities, I believe, eight of them have buildings, 10,000 seats plus. It's, it's, a, it's a dynamite league. You know, I'm glad to be a part of it. I've been a part of it in its early stages as a, both as a player and as a general manager. And to be a part of it now with the expansion and with the future expansion of the league, I'm very excited to be part of the International Hockey League. There's some money being thrown around as well. Michelle Mangeau, they say, is making about $225,000 to play in Milwaukee. You have uh, some players, you say your budget's okay, but at the same time, a lot of money from the independent teams being thrown at some of these players to put together winning hockey teams. Yeah, there's no doubt. You know, it's going to cost us more money to operate and, and to bring players in. In San Diego, we got a situation where it's more expensive to live in San Diego, being a West Coast team, a West Coast city. So we've paid the players a little bit more money, but in the long run, we feel it's going to help us at. Uh, with the type of players we have on the ice, it'll help us at the box office. Don, you played in this league. You played against Salt Lake in 1987-88. The Turner Cup, Paul Baxter was the coach. Rick Dudley was the coach for the Flint Spirits, and the Golden Eagles had Theron Fleury that year. He didn't play in that series. The Eagles won the Turner Cup. What do you remember about that? Well, I was a player assistant coach for Rick, and I remember we won the first two games in our building. Came here and enjoyed the city of Salt Lake too much and lost all three here. It was a great series. You know, the, we weren't supposed to be that far. We beat Muskegon uh, in the first round of the playoffs and had to beat Saginaw. It was a tremendous for us to be there in the finals to be one of two, two teams left at that time of the year. Unfortunately, we didn't win, but I gave my hats off at that time and I do again to the Salt Lake team because they had a great hockey team coached by a good guy in Paul Baxter. We're with Don Waddell. We're going to take a look very quickly at the scoring summary in the hockey game uh, in just a bit. Don, again, uh, congratulations on your great start. Very quickly, a note on the Salt Lake Golden Eagles. Any comments? Oh, I liked their team. You know, obviously losing to LeBeau and Heapy for tonight's game, calling up to Calgary, hurts their hockey club from a skill level. But I think they got a, a pretty good mix of guys here. They got great goaltending. You know, Jeff Reese played extremely well against us the other night. I think they're going to be there when the uh, chips are done at the end of the season. Bobby Francis will have this team playing very good hockey. Well, Don, if uh, your team can drop one, we'll see what happens in the, the near future. I'm sure we will someplace, Mike. Thanks. Don Waddell, Vice President, General Manager of the San Diego Gulls. The score through two, San Diego three, and Salt Lake nothing. This is Salt Lake Golden Eagles hockey. Sorry, I couldn't hear, I couldn't hear exactly, it was fading in and out and I couldn't hear what you said. Sorry. It's been a long period. What about that great Phil, great interview right there, huh? Huh? I used up a lot of time. Hey, we're, but we're, we're, we're okay. Hey, we're all right. You know, we had Don Waddell, Brian, he get a record in the bullpen. Oh, yeah. No question. We'll go after this. Think I can get a raise? Think Hot Rod will talk to me? <laughs> At least I brushed my teeth. I don't have bad breath. Do you brush them after eating spaghetti? I don't know. I'm just kidding. Oh, shit, I was going to say, how did you do that? I'm going to eat cloves of garlic next time. Oh, yeah. San Diego goals coached by former Buffalo Sabres mentor Rick Dudley have a 3-0 lead over Salt Lake. Hi everybody, welcome back. Mike Barak alongside former Golden Eagle Dave Ferracasi. It has been a tough night here for the Golden Eagles. Uh, only 14 shots on goal. Dave, uh, we'll take a look at the scoring summary in just a moment. Goals up by three. It's very tough. And long night for the Golden Eagles. 14 shots. You don't have those high scoring opportunities and it's a long night. 
Well, the goals uh, scored two in the first period, and in the second period added one more. Nichols, Nichols with his shot that rises on Trefloff, hits his stick and goes right over his shoulder and into the net. Robbie Nichols uh, scored the goal. The goal scored two in the first, and again, Nichols down the left wing side on another angle, just slammed it behind Trefloff for that big 3 0 lead. This is a guy that's been in the league since uh, the early 1980s and uh, scores for San Diego. Again, his sixth of the year, a shorthanded goal, 6 15 the time. He scored eight shorthanded goals two years ago for the San Diego Gulls. Dave Herakasi, it's uh, 3 0, only 14 shots on goal without Sean. Hafey, without Patrick LeBeau and against the most experienced team over 4,000 man games NHL experience things don't look good for Salt Lake but as you say if they get a goal get something started early turn the momentum around you never know well I'm sure Bobby Francis is addressing that right now in the dressing room they need to get a little more aggressive they need to capitalize when they get those good scoring opportunities you're not going to beat a Malarchuk with the only 14 shots well, that's the story here. 14 shots on goal for the Eagles. The Gulls lead 3 to nothing. We'll come back with the third period in just a moment. This is Salt Lake Golden Eagles Hockey. He's, uh, no, he doesn't have his headset on yet. Hello? Hello? Yes, good. Everything okay? Okay, great. Yeah, we never did that. Okay. Stick with me, buddy. Good job from Jim Schoenemann. Schoenmeister. He may be doing jazz games soon. <laughs> San Diego goals, coached by Rick Dudley. One of four independent teams in the IHL. Lead the Calgary Flames top farm team, Salt Lake, 3 0 after two goals, two in the first one in the second and that's where we stand three nothing after two. Well the Eagles trailing here but one of the new features here in Salt Lake is the new mascot nicknamed Icy and uh, his name was uh, uh, drawn out from over 300 name possibilities and the fans seem to really enjoy him. He does some crazy things out there. Look at him as he goes down these stairs. He doesn't quit. I mean uh, he's seeing stars for sure. <laughs> he's great and he Takes a dive on the ice. They nicknamed him Icy. Some of the other possibilities, Goldie, and uh, oh, I'll tell you what, Eddie the Eagle. But they went with <laughs> Icy, and the fans seem to really enjoy that. Three nothing goals through 40 minutes of play. Clint Malarchuk still has his Buffalo Sabers uh, mask on. Doesn't really go well with the black and red of the San Diego Gulls, but I'm sure he's hoping uh, his team can hold on to the lead. Well, he hasn't, as we mentioned, with only 14 shots, he really hasn't been tested. Uh, much here tonight and the Eagles have got to turn on some offensive power to be successful. Okay, here we go in the third. The teams at even strength. Salt Lake down three to nothing and we're ready to go. And immediately the play at the defense and Salt Lake just wind it right back into San Diego territory and controlling the play is Perry Anderson to the right wing side. Eagles fiercely in a fourth check. Guy at the point. Shoots, he missed the target. Rose to the rebound. Centers. The large chuck. A fabulous save on Gary Clark. Best save of the night. And so the Eagles having their scoring chance and up into the Salt Lake players bench. Gary Clark's going to wish he had that one back as Clint Malarchuk says no. A little scuffle to the corner there. Uh, Lambert for uh, San Diego. Great shot here. Gary Clark wakes. He makes a good move, but a good save by Clint Malarchuk. 28 seconds gone into the third period. Kerry Clark in his third year for Salt Lake from Kelvington, Saskatchewan. 
his parents sometimes listen to the broadcast, believe it or not, all the way in Saskatchewan. And he's a fan favorite. He did the moonwalk earlier this season. He scored a goal and actually skates backwards, does a little dance to celebrate. He said no more moonwalks this year. He just wants to put home some goals. He does a great job. He's a real character out there. And I'll tell you one thing, he's a real hustler. And he makes things happen when he's on the ice. It was evident on the last play, just a great shot from Malarchuk. Denied the Golden Eagles getting on the scoreboard. Okay, the Eagles have Harkins, Forslin, and Harris on the back line, Wortman and Stolt. Here's the play on left wing, and here is Forslin, able to work his way to center. Dumps it into the goal zone. Starikoff stays with him, falls down, trying to get back up. And third, but not out, Stolt trying to fan on it. Or actually, does fan on it. Now Harkins trying to center one, bouncing around. He didn't try and miss it. Now the goals break back. Shank into the Salt Lake zone. Trefilov way out to play it away. Now Forslin on left wing, losing. Anderson steals, centers for Shank, but cleared away by Trefilov. And Forslin plays left corner, Salt Lake zone. Good hustle, and they were getting the slash. The call's gonna be made against San Diego. Eagles wind it to center, and as soon as the goaltender Trefilov off, six attackers, the Eagles can play the puck until the goals touch it with an empty net. The only problem is you don't want to knock it into your own net. Here's Stolk on the left wing side. Backs it up on the right wing boards and a break for Salt Lake. Here's Struch in with Harris. Struch in a goal, shoots in a shoulder save. Well, Larchuk, Eagles maintain possession. Stolk plays it, and as soon as the goals touch it, it's stoppage of play. Great uh, playing by Salt Lake here in this period. 3-0 goals. This is Salt Lake Golden Eagles hockey. gone long enough he might have taken another minor penalty shank was going out there banging guys Daniel Shank is slashing penalty, 132 gone into the period. Salt Lake on their third power play. They're 0 for 2 in this game, and the Eagles want to get back into it. It's going to have to be on this power play, and Udin holds the puck for the Golden Eagles. 23 years of age, born in Minsk in Russia. Right side for tournament. Plays it free for a hustling Struth. Back away, cleared but not out. Uh-oh. Udine ran into Wortman and then cleared by Nichols deep into the Salt Lake zone. And the goals waste no time in a clearing into the Salt Lake territory. A little confusion by the Golden Eagles. Udine and Wortman not being able to really set up properly and, and, and enable San Diego to clear the puck. Here's McDonough on the left wing side. Plays it free and cleared by Ruff all the way down. He sails it into the Salt Lake territory. Just skied it up in the air. Boy, they're great at that. Here's Shudin in his own side. Winds it free on the right wing side. Sometimes it looks so easy just to clear it down. But I'll tell you what, if you're pressured, it's not so easy. And Workman holds the puck. The Eagles very disorganized right now in the power play. Here they come. Tournament on the right side. In with Forslund. He loses the handle. The puck at a three on two. San Diego Brink. In across the line. Ruff passing it to the slot area, but swept away. And Guy plays back in the goal. Gold Eagles got to get something going. I, I don't really know why they're not setting up and trying to do it individually. Here is Harris runs into a Salt Lake player. Guy, a play it at the blue line, and Guy backs it up into the goal zone where McSween sweeps it into center. Salt Lake's Forslund back pedaling. Left wing side pass off the mark, and Nichols slams it down, and the Eagles penalty killing. Very ineffective here on this uh, man advantage. Total confusion right now on behalf of the Golden Eagles. Here is Salt Lake's Clark, works out of there. Part of the reason, however, is good uh, checking by San Diego. However, ineffective passing by Salt Lake. Here's the forward on the opposite side. Harris not only can't center it, but he loses his piece of lumber. He can't score without the stick. Golden Eagles totally frustrated. They're not setting up. They're not being patient. Here's a pass way off the mark to Guy. And DeGray steals in across the line. DeGray, a shot blocked away. San Diego outscoring the opposition 23-5 over the last six games. They score! Quick backhand, I believe, Perry Anderson. And the goals lead 4 to nothing. He came from nowhere. He actually was behind the net. 
and then with the quick wraparound, gives San Diego a four to nothing lead. His wife, Sherry, is pretty happy. She's from Salt Lake, and the goals lead by four. De Gray gets the puck in the corner, he just throws it out behind the net, and here comes Perry Anderson sweeping around with the backhand, and just puts it between uh, Trefilov's legs. Barry Anderson, the former Eagle, with a quick backhand on the short side. Just, uh, just handcuffs Trefilov. Perry Anderson, he had an opportunity earlier in the game and tried to do the same thing. This time he converted. Dale DeGray on the assist. Lindy Ruffin assists, I believe, also for Perry Anderson on the season for the goals. His first goal of the year, and that's why he's so excited. His first one to give San Diego the a 4 0 lead. And the play in front, Clark over skates. McCarthy now for Clark back of the goal. Clark now for the Golden Eagles. Roughed up to Gray, stands him up. They still try and fight for it, and Clark comes up with a puck back of the goal. Rims it on the opposite side. Wordman unable to sweep it home, and McCarthy plays for Solik. 15 and a half minutes left in this game. San Diego leading 4 0. And they're playing textbook hockey here tonight. By the way, John Anderson, or I should say Perry Anderson, played two years in Salt Lake. Here's Gross down. Right side pass for Chernamaz. Back of the goal for Gillingham. However, the pass ahead goes over his stick. Now Chernamaz. Back to the point for Guy to the near wing for Gillingham. He shut off the mark. And ricochets in the slot. Cleared but not out. Stoke paws it down. Losing. Shank breaks back for John Anderson. Shank moving in. Guy ties him up. It's clear to me. Far corner Salt Lake zone and Chernamaz able to play it for Salt Lake. Right side for Gillingham. Loses the handle of the puck and then clears it right back in. And the goals continue to check, check, check. Here's the play at center and Stroot just gingerly drops it back for Guy and the Eagles not able to muster much offense right now as they clear it into the San Diego zone. Well, the, the veteran uh, San Diego defensemen, they create confusion. They're always hooking, holding these little jabs away from the play. They keep you honest at all times. Well, we'll have a, a stop on the far side as Chernamaz had a hold of the San Diego player in front of the goals bench. Gillingham appears to be the guilty eagle skating towards the penalty box. It is a 4 0 goals lead. Things have not gone well tonight for Salt Lake. This is Salt Lake. Golden Eagles hockey. The wheels are off. Two minutes or I'll tell you they're not doing they can't do anything right. Scott O'Neill. Four nothing goals earlier. Todd Gillingham skated to the penalty box, matching minors. Gillingham a high stick, Arneal a slash. 5:32 the time. They have the penalties on the scoreboard. As a result, the teams at a four on four. Both teams playing without a man, even though it's an even strength situation. Here's Harris now works one on three into the goal zone. In against Ruff. Boy, Ruff just stands him right back behind it. And Harkins in deep to forecheck. Two Eagles in deep. Nichols drops it right under the stick of Harkins. Eludes one man. Now tries to center one. Loses the handle of it right to San Diego. Hankinson into the neutral zone. Works against the defense. Drops it for Ruff at the left point. Shoots it way wide. Harris trying to dig it free. Now Nichols to the near hash marks. Melrose ties him up. Hankinson now for San Diego, just flattened by Udine, and Melrose on the right side. There's but not out rough, holds it in. Across for Nichols, into the slaughter, and out of the right wing point for Dale DeGray. DeGray centers for Nichols, shoots! Can't save Trefiloff, and cleared away. Trefiloff has played all right tonight, but not like he did against Milwaukee, and the Eagles cleared all the way down. Well, it's just, he's had some tough shots to handle, and then in the key saves, he just has the pucks handcuffed him at every instant. Here is Stoke on the right side for St. Pierre. Now the Eagles break two on two. Stoke and Forslund. Stoke jumping into the play, falls down and centers. The Malarchuk leads for Curry Anderson on left wing. Very Ontario native will turn 31 years of age, and it's a clear right back in, actually. 
It is offside at the defense. Uh, solemn bench, Bob Francis, along with Slavo Lerner, assistant coach from the Czech national team a couple of years ago. What's going through his mind right now? Well, he's just, obviously, Bob is, uh, as we mentioned, is missing his two key offensive stars, but he's trying to find some combination that's going to work and give this some spirit uh, to this team and give him some lift. David St. Pierre and Thomas Forslund up front. It's a great chance for St. Pierre to get some some playing time in a 4 0 game with 12.59 left in the third period. These two teams meet again tomorrow night. Well, the broadcast on the Eagles radio network will be 8.05 Salt Lake time, and the Eagles will be off until next Friday when they take on the San Jose Sharks affiliate, the Kansas City Blades, the defending Turner Cup champions. Here's St. Pierre in across the lot. Tries to stick handle in neatly a la Dennis Savard. Plays it for Thomas Forslund. Here's Forslund. Back to the right wing point for Wortman. Pinching in a backhander, but flagged down at the goal's defense. And Starikoff, able to play it free, shoots it in front for Hankinson. Tipped away. Here is the play now in front for DeGray, but the goals were changing and Salt Lake break out of there. Well, it's imperative that Salt Lake get something going right now offensive if they have any chance to come back. It's dismal right now. Here are the goals. Line a center one. Loose in front. Tipped away at the left point. McSween is shot. Treffle off. A sprawling save. And the Eagles just dump but not out. Anderson. Line a center one. Eagles break back. Workman. Backhands on edge. High in the air into the San Diego territory where McSween able to twirl back. McCarthy and John Anderson collide. McCarthy wins the battle this time and feeds it for Brose. Three Eagles cutting in front. Clark, but it's checked away, and the goals break back. Here is the hard-nosed Daniel Schink. Over 700 minutes in penalties in three years pro. Here's Clark on the right side, but a two-line offside with 11.34 left third period. San Diego leading by a score of four to nothing. Rick Dudley on the bench. Very excited about the way things are going for his hockey team. We have some scores in the IHL. The other independent team, Milwaukee, doubling up the Indianapolis Ice 4-2 at the Pepsi Coliseum. The independent Cincinnati Cyclones, 5-2 win over Kalamazoo. And uh, so we've had three finals from the league here tonight. Cincinnati up at 6-6-1. Icy now uh, again entertaining the fans. He's wearing number one. It's a goaltender's number, isn't it? He's the one and only. The one and only Icy. He's trying to get the fans going here, at least to get one goal here tonight, Dave. For the fans, they don't want to go home with a big goose egg on the board here tonight. Definitely not. But they've got to get some going. They've got to get some high-quality shots on Malarcha. Here's the play on the right wing side. <laughs> Boy, that icy shaking hands all over the place here. And underneath our broadcast booth, here's the play at center. Guy drops it back for Melrose at his own defense. Losing. Break for the goals. In on goal, Lamaru fires, and Trefloff gets a piece. Here is the play on the right wing corner, and St. Pierre, outlets for McCarthy, pops it into the goal zone, and Dedean back after 10 years, professional for Gordon Dedean. Right side for Perry Anderson once more, shoots and a stick save, big rebound, and he almost puts home another one. On the right side, Chernomaz trying to dig it free. Well, his in-laws are here in Salt Lake, building a home in Sandy, Utah, and Perry Anderson, Doing things here tonight, scored a goal. There's a penalty coming up against San Diego. Back after it is the defenseman to Dean, and we're gonna have a stop at a holding penalty against the goals. Power play coming up to Salt Lake. Four nothing San Diego. This is Salt Lake Golden Eagles hockey. with the puck. Four nothing goals earlier. Lamaru worked into the Salt Lake zone and Trefloff says no. Excellent save by Trefloff. He goes spread eagle on the ice. The Lamaru's getting uh, pestered by one of the eagle defensemen, but Trefloff makes a good save. Power play Salt Lake. They're 0 for 3 in this game. Work it to the right wing point for Wortman. Cuts in, shoots, and hits a player in front. Chernomaz recovers, however. Knocked down, trying to get back up. Gillingham trying to jostle it free. 
and it is Gillingham trying to hold on. It's cleared on the opposite wing, and outside the line, Wortman couldn't hold it in. The Eagles have got to set up right now. They got to get control of that puck, that shot by Wortman. I thought it was going to be the first goal of the night for the Golden Eagles. Here's Judine, able to slowly maneuver to center. Right side for the Swedish native, Forslund in across the line. Oh, he's leveled. And actually, the goal player uh, fell down, Bill Holder. At the right point, Udine to Wurman. One-timer way over top of the net wide and clear to the blue line. Udine losing, great for Arneal. Udine hauls him down, and Rick Dudley's furious at the bench. Felt Udine should have gotten a minor penalty there for tripping. Here's McDonough in the slot for the captain, Ruff. And Ruff just twirls back and Boy, great defense, clears it back to his own blue line. Excellent defense. That's that experience, and we've mentioned this all night, not to be redundant, but it's paying off in big time. Yeah, they don't Sandy. panic, and in fact, you would think, why clear it back into your own end? But they want to eat this time off the power play, and they're doing a great job. They've just whittled down about 15 or 20 seconds in Salt Lake play. 9.06 to go, third period, 30 seconds left in the Lamaru infraction. And the Eagles on the attack. St. Pierre in across the line for Stroop. Two rookies on this line. St. Pierre back of the goal. Here's St. Pierre back in. A large chuck to save, but at least a scoring chance for the forward St. Pierre. Well, Rick Dudley, a few gray hairs from coaching the Buffalo Sabres in the National Hockey League. That'll do it to you at the National Hockey League level. He's trying to get back to the NHL doing a great job in San Diego, signed a two-year contract with the Gulls prior to the start of this year. Oh, Another yes. final in the International Hockey League, Atlanta over Peoria. By a score that was intended for St. Pierre, but tipped away. And again, the Gulls clear the zone, just three seconds left in the penalty. Well, I'll tell you, the Eagles really never being able to set up and get anything big or good quality shots at all. Here's Harris now in across the line. Second year Eagle player, centers one, but a, another sweep check by the goals holder. He kept the stick right on the ice to break up that pass. Here's the play back of the goal, Harris after it, and Holder plays it on left wing. They teach the young defenseman, Dave, to keep the sticks low to keep away those passes on the two-man breaks. Here's Harry Anderson in across the line, a slap shot, kick, save, rebound, and trample off the save of the second player, I believe it was McDonough, after the goals, let it fly down the right side. Boy, Perry Anderson picking up that puck in the neutral zone. The rifleman lets go a great shot. Trepeloff with the most spectacular save of the evening. Just gets his toe on it and smothers the rebound. Anderson scored 32 goals with Salt Lake in 1981-82. 23 goals in 82-83. His nickname, Wheels, uh, for his uh, tremendous speed. He slowed down a little bit. He can still skate with the best in the he, IHL. He can wheel and deal, I'll tell you. And he's got a good shot. Uh, Trefloff had to be very keen to make the save. At the point, Starikoff as we're back to action. Steered aside by Trefloff and cleared into the San Diego zone. And here is Sergei Starikoff, an eighth round doubles pick in 1989. Able to play it free into the neutral zone. Clark trying to sweep it free, covering up Wortman for the moment. And the Eagles' Wortman breaks out of there. Leads a three-man rush to center. Wortman moving free. Stops and across the line. Wortman drops from McCarthy. Able to play it free to the corner. Clark trying to dig it free and cleared right back out to center. Well, as Ke uh, Kerry Clark was really abusing Daniel Shank on that play, and Shank was hoping for a penalty, but nothing did materialize. Here is Clark in deep to fourth check. Works it to, for McCarthy. Trying to center for Bros. McCarthy back of the net. Skated off. Bros trying to dig it free also. Clark off on a line change. He's dead tired. Gillingham now out for Sulik. It's cleared, but not out. Gillingham steals, shoots, kick save by Malarchuk. And then cleared right back all the way down into the Salt Lake zone. It's going wide of the target. Kevin Guy after it, and as he touches it, icing is the call. 4 nothing goals. This is Salt Lake Golden Eagles hockey. Well, I tell you, I wouldn't be looking forward to be the goaltender tomorrow night in San Diego. Oh. Trevor Kidd's in trouble. I'm talking about 50. Clint Malarchuk, 12 NHL shutouts to his credit. 
and he led the league with Washington a few years ago, had four with the Capitals as the Eagles back in their own side. Here is Chernomaz in his own defense for the Golden Eagles, trying to work it free, and they freeze it back to the goal with 6.38 left in this third period, four to nothing in favor of San Diego. Dave, you're sure you've played in some clunkers over the years as a professional player. Do you remember a game that you'd like to forget in your days as a player? Well, uh, Francis and Todd Harkins, I'm sure, would like to forget this one. I'll tell you, I, I can recall games when in, in my first year in the NHL rookie season with California. We had a tough go. We didn't win 20 games that year, and we went and we used to go on the East Coast swing, get beat 11-1 in New York, go on to Toronto, get beat. Uh, tough time. Well, Kim Dry Lucky Puck Night, November 20th, the Eagles against Kansas City next Friday night. First 3,000 fans will see free souvenir hockey pucks. We want to thank the proud sponsors, uh, Kim Dry, for the puck promotion next Friday night. As they clear it right back in offside at the defense with 6.31 to go, third period, four nothing goals. We used to go on some of those road swings, and I'm telling you, we'd get scored against, we'd give up 50 goals in about five, six games. You know, it was so tough. I mean, you know, all those, we go Ladies on those long road trips. The the well, they're announcing the attendance tonight, 65-78 here at the Delta Center. You never like to be shut out at home, Dave, and I'm sure right now they're looking at just getting at least one for these fans here this evening that have had to sit through this one. Please, they owe it to the fans. It was a great crowd, great fans. Enthusiasm level has been very high tonight. Faceoff will be uh, inside the blue line of the right of the goal with 6.22 left. Again, this is the advantage of being an independent team. They're not going to lose guys. They're not going to have guys called up to the NHL level. So in some ways, being an independent team, they have an advantage over the affiliated teams in the IHL, like the Golden Eagles. There's no question that's a very true statement. Uh, the only thing, as I mentioned earlier, the only way they're going to lose is if they get injuries. Similar in uh, this city with the Salt Lake Trappers and the Pioneer League. Quite often they've dominated being an independent team. They won't lose players to other teams in the rookie league. Rick Dudley looks on. Rick Dudley uh, coached uh, as much in uh, Buffalo. He also coached a team, the old East Coast Hockey League for a championship. Those players on the bench now. How does he keep his team motivated with his team up four to nothing? And you know, I would think it could really easily be a letdown. Well, I think the players uh, take a lot of pride in the, in the team that they've assembled, and they look at each other and they want to just keep performing. Here's the play at the defense where Stolk on the right side for Wortman. Criticism about the goals, though, with the older players, 27, 28 years of age average, they feel they might wear down before this season concludes. Don Waddell does not subscribe to that. Here's the play on left wing, and Lamaru able to chop it right back in with under six minutes to go. Goals four, the Eagles nothing. And uh, Forstlin, even the play it on the boards on left wing, and St. Pierre headbands for Harris, and he slams it right back in. But uh, the, the Eagles can't mount any type of offensive pressure at all. Bob Francis, I know, preaches clear it in deep. The Eagles are clearing in deep, Dave, but as soon as the goals defensemen, like Lindy Ruff gains possession, they just immediately clear the zone. Well, you, when you clear the puck in, you gotta be on top of the puck. You just can't throw it in and let them bring it back out. Yeah, the Eagles really need to intensify their forecheck and the pass for Clark off his stick and then clear right back in by San Diego. Now we got a cricket match going on out there and uh, the Eagles, that's not working in the, the right way for the Golden Eagles. Here's the play on right wing. Clark able to swivel the center. He is tied up. They just take him right off the puck and the defenseman on the right wing side clearing it actually was the forward shank. Lifts it high in the air. We're down to 4.55 left, third period. Goals four, and Salt Lake nothing. As San Diego trying to work it free for Shank. Three goes back to converge on Shank, who just pats it to the side of the goal for John Anderson. Centers across uh, to the left wing point now. Shank again is there, and Chernomaz leads it free for Clark, and he's bumped off into the neutral zone, and the defenseman holder slams it right back in. Boy, the Golden Eagles, they can't. Melrose trying to get something set up to Rich Chernomaz, but Nothing really is happening good for the Golden Boy, they're Eagles. on the Eagles at all times. Here's Gillingham, neat deke into the San Diego zone. A wrist shot way wide of the target. Now it's the play back of the goal. Chernomaz trying to muscle it free. Gillingham 
in the slot. Now Salt Lake Strooch gains possession for Gillingham. Now Chernomaz trying to center for Gillingham and swept by the Gulls. Deeper to the Salt Lake zone. Udine rushing back after it as he touches and icing is the call with 3.55 left, 4-0 Gulls. This is Salt Lake Golden Eagles hockey. Boy, you talk about a long night. Ooh -hoo. Yeah, I went yeah. last night too. Boy, this is tough. Jeez. It's tough doing a game when you when it's everything's negative on a team that you're kind of cheering for. It is. It really is. <laughs> I want to thank uh, Brian Douglas, our engineer and producer tonight. Our, Jim Shoneman, who helped out this evening, and the entire crew on the cameras this evening on our television broadcast tonight. As they clear it uh, right back on the far side. As the Eagles trying to work it free, it's loose uh, back along the far side, and round free in the center. Politely corrected, producer and director Brian Douglas, and he's doing a great job as always. Here's Chernomaz across the line, poke check, and the goals break back. Here's Arneal in across the line for Floyd, loose in front. They score again. How about that? A centering pass, and Robbie Nichols does the little dance of his, and the goals increase their lead to five to nothing. Boy, on the play, I'll tell you, the opportunistic uh, Robbie Nichols. Good play by Scott Arneal as he wheeled in on Andre Trefloff. Robbie Nichols, opportunistic, as always, scores a second goal, just batting in a rebound. As the goals worked in across the line, and a good play as they worked in past the Salt Lake defense as Arneal set up the play. Arneal makes the move on, on Workman, and then the puck just lays loose, and Robbie Nichols just pounces on it and shoots it by a sprawling Andre Trefloff. Arneal on the assist, Nichols the goal is second of the game, seventh of the year, and the goal's up five to nothing, and that goal has sent most of these fans to the exits, and the goals just pop it in the center. <laughs> and third right back into the Salt Lake zone, and Stokes squirrels back, falls down, gets back up, and Guy gains possession. When things go bad, they continue that way. Stokes just fell back, back, uh, back of his goal. And the Eagles, Harkins rushing into the scene and wound free to the right wing shot. San Diego now outscoring the opposition 25 to 5 over their last six games as Malarchuk holds on and the goals continue to hold on. It's uh, going to be a 14 0 1 record for San Diego. They've outscored the opposition now with five goals tonight 74 to 34. They've averaged over five goals per game and given up less than three, actually 2.36 coming in. They'll lower that tonight as a team average. That's an incredible ratio. Clint Malarchuk looks for the whitewash here tonight. Well, Clint Malarchuk uh, really not having that many high quality shots to stop tonight, but in talking with Don Waddell between periods, the key to his team, he says he can't believe is his defense. They do a great job. Well, uh, Rick Kinnickel, their other goaltender, has one shutout to his credit this year. Malarchuk looks for his first in the International Hockey League. And again, 12 shutouts in his National Hockey League career and cleared right back in. But as you point out, Dave, it's a shutout perhaps. The Eagles don't score in the last 229 here, but he didn't really have to test a lot of rubber in front. No, he really hasn't been tested with any of the high quality shots that I mentioned that need to come from the Eagles, and uh, that dispels success for San Diego. Here is the play right back into the Salt Lake zone. Melrose has to go back. Salt Lake down, 210 left in the game. Sure, the Eagle players will be thankful when this thing concludes. John Anderson is shot. Truffle off a stick save. And the whole play is whistled down in front. I'm sure Andre Trefeloff has some thoughts in goal tonight and probably wondering uh, what's going on here. Quite often left unprotected between that six foot by four foot goal crease area. Well, the constant pressure that San Diego has put on the Golden Eagles tonight is has made it tough for the, the Eagles defense and Andre Trefeloff. And then when that shots come from the point as frequent that they have tonight from the San Diego defenseman, it's tough. Eagles about to drop their fourth in a row. They've lost three straight and now the Eagles have been outscored 18-6 over their last four hockey games after a pretty good run there where the Golden Eagles had been 
winning very well. They had won five of six before this slump. Here's St. Pierre on the right side. Let's it go for Gillingham. Slap shot. Olarchuk a glove save. He catches it and holds on with 136 to go. Olarchuk right now concerned about the zero on the scoreboard. Looks for that first shutout this year for him, second as a team. And Malarchuk had 12 in his NHL career, as we mentioned earlier. Well, the Golden Eagles in their last Turner Cup uh, championship in 87, they started off with a 2-8-1 start to their year. So fans, just stay tuned, and, and this team's going to come along. They got the potential to be another championship team. But and I would assume that jail. the Flames, if they keep LeBeau and Hafey up for a while, will acquire a player or two to help out the Golden Eagles, although it's tough once that season starts. Here's Hankinson trying to maneuver into the Salt Lake zone, but tied up at the last moment, and Wortman leads a three-man rush into the goal zone ahead for Chernomaz, but a stride inside the line offside at the defense with 120 left. Not much uh, more for Bob Francis talking things over with Slana Lur Slava Lerner and saying, well, get another one tomorrow night at least. Yeah, in San Diego. <laughs> I don't know if they're looking forward to that game against the Gulls. They'll have over 10,000 at the Sports Arena tomorrow night. And these Gulls are looking for the win number 14 tonight, number 15 tomorrow evening. Here's the play at the defense, and Udine clears it off the board, deep into the goal zone, and Starikov plays it on the opposite side. It's not been a good last couple of nights for Larry Miller. Order the Utah Jazz, the Salt Lake Golden Eagles. This team's struggling at home. To say the least, but uh, that horizon's there, and it's a bright-looking one for both squads. Here's Harkins a long shot. Malarchuk the save as we're down to under a minute left in the hockey game. And he goes. Nichols slams it in. He looks for the hat trick, but now goes off as the San Diego goals change up offensively. 40 seconds left in the hockey game. Forslund whips it in. Malarchuk clubs it and holds on with the player McCarthy stationed in the goal crease area. So again, Salt Lake will play the Kansas City Blades next Friday here at the Delta Center. Our next TV game will be December 2nd against the Phoenix Roadrunners. Rick Dudley looks up at the clock and says 32.5 seconds left. Right now, I'm sure he would love for his goaltender, Malarchuk, to get the shutout. Fans looking to at least see one goal here tonight. They have 32 seconds to do that. Well, Clint Malarchuk, like we've mentioned, he really hasn't had that many high-quality shots to stop, but, but uh, it's rare for goaltenders to get shut out, and uh, he'd be happy to get out of this building with one. Eagles have not been shut out at home this year, not since last season, as they clear it deep into the Salt Lake territory. It's going to go wide of the target, I believe, and icing will come up here, and the faceoff will come all the way back, and very rare for a team to be shut out at home. And check out my trusty red book from last year, and check on the last time the Golden Eagles were shut out at home. And it was last season, Three to nothing, December 11th. Bruce Racine of the now defunct Muskegon Lumberjacks had uh, the whitewash against the Golden Eagles, so it's not too often a team gets shut out at home. 21 seconds left. Eagles trying to clear it free, but rough for the goals. Just picks an opening, clears it all the way down. Should be an icing. Melrose back at for an icing is the call with 11 seconds left. That's all he wanted to do, ice the puck, get it out of his own end. Well, he's just, you're definitely the team is uh, is trying to get Clint Larchuk the shutout, and the uh, defenseman trying to throw that little flutter uh, shot down the ice, trying to hope that uh, it doesn't create an icing, but, uh, but they're just trying to keep it out of that zone. Face-off will be circled to the left of Larchuk, 11 seconds to go. Brost, McCarthy, and Fleck, Wortman and Melrose on defense. The last ditch effort to Put one behind the 31-year-old from Grand Prairie, Alberta. However, the goals win the draw. Big face-off cleared again down the ice. This should do it, but not before. Kerry Clark wants to go with a San Diego player and falls on top, continues to flail away. It's Perry Anderson on the bottom of that. 0.9 seconds left for the game, and Kerry Clark going with a goals player. As mentioned, Anderson in the linesman Steve Metcalf and Tim Brown in a separate. I didn't really see how the play started. There was a little scuffle on the boards, and uh, uh, we were watching the puck go down for icing, and then all of a sudden, here they go. Well, we'll have fighting majors here. Clark and Anderson. Clark swirls his finger up into the center ice area. 
gives the fans at least something to cheer here tonight if they couldn't get a goal. I think a little frustration on Kerry Clark's uh, part. He had a great scoring opportunity at the start of the third period, and he was unable to capitalize on it. Well, Archie, what a fine save. Well, tomorrow night, these two teams will meet once more. San Diego will try and move their record to 15-0-1. They're going to be 14-0-1 here after this one. It's all but over, just .9 seconds left, just enough to drop the puck, and Clint Malarchuk will celebrate already some of the goal players going over to talk to the San Diego netminder. Next Friday night, Eagles, well, it's a little premature there, first shutout, but <laughs> Brian Douglas joking with me there. It's, it is over. They'll just drop the puck, and he'll get his first shutout. Let's be official on this, though. What if they win the draw and just slam it all the way down in the net? <laughs> Here we go, they drop the puck, Eagles win it, and now it's over. Yep, you can put that on now. First shutout for Clint Malarchuk. The goals out to congratulate the veteran of the National Hockey League, 338 games. San Diego whipping up on Salt Lake here tonight, five to nothing, but it's not over completely as Rich Chernamaz having some words with Lamaru on the far side. It's a quiet Eagles team going off. The goals celebrating. That's the final here tonight. Five to nothing, San Diego. We'll come back and wrap it up in just a moment. Five. Just, oh, uh, and the first two or the last two? Anderson and Nichols. The last two, he'll show the last two goals. Okay. Total dom. We'll talk about the total dominance of this San Diego team. 25 to five over their last six. Uh, no, first goal was Anderson, uh, Perry Anderson, 25, and then Robbie Nichols, 12, the second goal. I hope. Did we get the final shots, Brian? Do you know what they were? Uh, no, the, the final total shots on goal. Five to nothing, our final tonight from the Delta Center. The San Diego Gulls, the winningest team in the league, defeat the Golden Eagles here tonight. They shellock the Golden Eagles. They're now 14-0-1. I'm Mike Barrick, joined by Dave Ferrecasi. Dave, a disappointing game, obviously, for the fans here tonight. Say the least, I mean, a total domination by the San Diego Gulls team. Uh, just a heck of an effort. Well, the uh, Gulls led three to nothing after two and added to that in the third. First former Golden Eagle, Perry Anderson, gave the Gulls a four to nothing advantage. Perry Anderson getting that puck behind an end, just swooped around on the back end, put it right between Trefilov's legs. And then with the score, four to nothing, they added another one as Skyler O'Neill started the play. Trefilov came in and it looked like Robbie Nichols was able to bang it in. It may have been the forward Arneal, but the Gulls win it five to nothing. Final shots tonight. 28 to 21, seven shots for Salt Lake in the third, only 21 total in the game. Clint Malarchuk, his first shutout of the year, but not really tested offensively for Salt Lake here this evening. Clint Malarchuk uh, getting the shutout, as you mentioned, but uh, high quality shots. Eagles really didn't mount any serious pressure. No, they didn't, and that was a factor here tonight. The scoring play, Perry Anderson at uh, 351, Robbie Nichols, second of the game, seventh of the year at 1634, and that was the final tonight, five to nothing over the Salt Lake Golden Eagles. Well,
Well, the Eagles without Patrick LeBeau and Sean Hafey, Friday the 13th, we talked about it the open, not a good day for Salt Lake's coach, Bob Francis. His two leaders called up to Calgary, and it really made a difference against the team that is dominating. They've outscored the opposition 25 to five, San Diego over their opponents in the last six hockey games. Well, the youth-oriented uh, Salt Lake Golden Eagle team, when you lose two good, gr great offensive players like the Golden Eagles did tonight on their call up to Calgary, it makes it tough. Bobby Francis scratching his head all night long trying to find that combination that would go out there and get, do something positively on the offensive side. How good are the Gulls? The Gulls are an excellent team. As I said, the Gulls are so strong defensively, they're going to be tough. Only injuries will keep this team, uh, make them average with the rest of the teams in the league. They're a good team. All right, Dave, thanks. Dave Herrick is here alongside I'm Mike Barrick. Don't forget, tomorrow night on the Golden Eagles Radio Network, 8 o'clock broadcast on the Eagles Radio Network, as mentioned. Next home game will be next uh, uh, Friday night against Kansas City. Again, the final this evening, San Diego 5 and Salt Lake nothing. So long from the Delta Center.